Hello my Bible journaling friends, it's Natalie Elkinstone here and I'm wishing you a very happy 2016. Now hands up if you got a new um, journaling Bible for Christmas and you're wondering um, how to start in it. Um, I got mine for Christmas last year, so in fact today marks my one year anniversary of doing Bible journaling and you can see that I have filled up lots of pages and it's now quite a fat <laughs> Bible that doesn't close and I've learnt lots of things throughout my year of doing it. When I first started, I think if I can quickly find it because I'm pretty sure I started somewhere in Genesis, um, yeah it was this one. Uh, in fact it was this one without all the colour behind it because in fact that colour is from the page on behind, from behind. Um, it was when I started I literally I stamped this bird I put on this label that says today was a good one which I thought was quite fitting and uh, just yeah stuck in this little tab and these couple of other little stamps and colored it in and called it you know a day because it was my very first entry and it took me quite a bit of courage to even do that like I don't know about you but when I'm starting to think about facing a new project I want to like plan it all out and I want everything to be perfect and I want it to be like the best thing ever and I you know I've got a lot of high expectations but when it comes down to it uh, you know I think we can make all of the plans in the world but there is nothing that's any better than just starting and I think that's um, very true when it comes to Bible journaling I think especially because it's the Bible uh, we want to make sure that when we actually do do something in it that it's the highest quality or the best that we can possibly make it um, and I, you know I'm just speaking from personal experience I know that not every entry that I have done here is my best I know that it's sometimes it really hasn't turned out the way I've wanted it to turn out and I'm really I'm okay with that I'm I'm very happy with using my journaling bible almost like uh, an art journal like I've tried out lots of different techniques in there as well and somewhere along the line you'll find out uh, what you enjoy doing and, and what God's calling you to do in, in that moment um, and you know that's essentially the essence of it all it's about spending time with God and then reflecting on that and allowing yourself to express it back to him as a worship and so I think we need to forget all about the what technique can I use here and will this look good in the end because um, you know it's really not it's really not about that and I think sometimes we get caught up and especially in this community we get caught up with comparing our pages to other people's and thinking oh you know my my style isn't uh, as painty as Shana's and it's not as drawy um, as you know you know what I'm saying as whoever's and uh, my style just doesn't compare to anybody else's and you know that's exactly my point that I wanted to make here it's about not comparing yourself to others and it's really about doing your own thing and I know I've said that before but I think especially when we're starting a new year and people want to start things afresh uh, this kind of thought creeps in and so the verse that I was drawn to today actually talks about this thing it's in Galatians 1 verse 10 and it says for am I now seeking the approval of man or of God or am I trying to please man for if I was still trying to please man I would not be a servant of Christ and so that's the verse that I'm going to do today and I'm very I think quickly going to be doing this I don't have a huge plan I've got a little bit of a plan but that's usually how I go into my Bible journaling I have a little bit of a plan and then I just start and so uh, this verse being about seeking the approval of man or sort of standing out from um, the crowd or being an individual being an individual I think and doing what God has called you to do uh, regardless of what other people think uh, got me thinking of that saying about um, being a flamingo in a flock of pigeons and I remember that we've got that awesome flamingo stamp in um, the the set which is available on the Illustrated Faith Etsy the high and lifted up stamp set's got this flamingo in it so that's where I started 
Um, and for my flock of pigeons, there wasn't a pigeon stamp, but I do have a chicken stamp um, from a different company. So I'm going to do a flock of chickens with my flamingo. <laughs> um, I am using Stays on Ink because I'll probably add some color afterwards. And so the Stays on is waterproof. And then I can do things like watercolors afterwards if I want to. And that's generally how I do things. Again, um, I guess this is what I've learned is my style. I haven't prepped the page in any way because one, I can't really be bothered <laughs> because, you know, it's about, for me, it's about responding in the moment. So here we go. I'm stamping my first um, pigeon slash chicken. <laughs> and prior to starting this video, I have made a couple of chicken masks because if I'm going to do a flock then I kind of want all of these chickens to be overlapping so what I've done is I've stamped out the same chickens on a post-it note so that's got the little sticky bit at the top and I have cut out two already so if I stick that over the top of the chicken and then I want my flamingo to of course be sort of the centerpiece of this part so just inking up my flamingo and this is why I've done the mask because I knew his knee was going to overlap um, on that chicken. So stamping him down. Um, as you can see, I put my clear mat, my Bible mat underneath the page because when you're stamping, you kind of need a bit of a firmer surface to work on. Um, and so then I can uh, peel that off. And now you can see that I haven't sort of crisscrossed my lines and overlapped them and whatnot. But I'm just going to stick that back on because, as I said, I'm going to be doing... A whole flock of chickens here or a couple anyway and just moving him um, I don't want to cover up heaps of the words and I when I do cover up the words or like when I stamp over the words I'm conscious of making sure that they are sort of line stamps so that it doesn't block off a huge amount um, of the word and you can still read it or still figure out what the words um, say behind it so there's some chickens will that be enough chickens for a flock mm, I think Maybe can I do something tricky, like use both of my masks? Oh, let me. And just stamp another one to make it look like a crowd behind there. Did that work? Yeah, I think that works. Let's leave it at that before I get too carried away. Um, I found this when I was looking through my stamp sets to um, find that... Uh, chicken because I knew that was in there somewhere. I found another fun one with this saying on it which sort of fit perfectly so I'm going to stamp that down here as well. It says weird is the new normal. <laughs> um, so you can you might be able to tell that you know whilst I most definitely take the word of God very seriously um, when it comes to my Bible journaling I want it to reflect me and sometimes I very serious and things like weird is the new normal might not be biblical um, but you know I think it kind of sums up the sentiment a little bit uh, so that's my stamping I will probably go ahead and color that I hadn't really made any plans about how I was going to do that or what I was going to do that with um, but I knew uh, to add a little bit of color I was going to add in some stickers so I've got my um, uh, Illustrated Faith, the Genesis Collection stickers, and these ones are the Colourful Say It labels, and this one says Wonderfully Made, so I thought that was going to work perfectly. Down there, and to add a tab, um, I was going to go with this beautiful one. And so this kind of adds the color already so you could even get away with just leaving it as black and white and maybe I'm gonna add a little bit of journaling down here uh, I definitely want to get the date in because um, you know we're trying to do this whole illustrated faith daily thing 
um, which I am not claiming to actually be attempting, but I am claiming to want to be spending um, as much time as I can illustrating my faith. I just know it's not going to be every single day. That's unfortunately just not going to be practical for me with, you know, working full time and a baby and all the rest of it. Um, so January 6th is the date today. Not that you'll be seeing this today, but that's when I've done it. Um, so that goes up there. Um, color, 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 color. Let's go with, I got some new fun pens for Christmas. So let's go with that because they're out because I've been playing with them. Um, they are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens and they're essentially just water, uh, water-based marker and somebody gave these to me and I am very, very happy with them. Uh, I've got them in 10 colors and they uh, cover most of the spectrum of the rainbow so I'm sure we can find something for a flamingo. I've got a very dark pink so that'll work. I'm not very creative when it comes to doing things that are uh, you know different colors than what they should be so if flamingo is supposed to be pink it's going to be pink so all I've done is um, scribble that that marker onto this acrylic block here um, and using a, a water pen I'm just going to paint him in and you know I try to keep it in the lines but I certainly don't make any attempt to uh, keep it neat and I am not fussed about that either because you know, I'm not claiming to be one of those watercolor artists. I'm not claiming to be a good illustrator, but I do like my color. So I'm just trying to get some color down. And so I'll wait for that to dry. Chickens, of course, should be in my book white and yellow. So white's probably not really gonna work, but I've got a yellow. So let's go with yellow chickens um, and another reason why I'm not too fast about keeping in the lines and what whatever is because you know it's much quicker this way if I just paint 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 I've got a couple of other colors left over on my block here so I'm kind of just picking them up um, there was obviously some green there um, picking them up just to add a little bit of variation in these colors just for fun so why can't we have a blue chicken of course we can have a blue chicken oh I haven't painted their wings let's do that if I go purple that's probably going to be too close to the flamingo color so let's go with more of a darker blue purple by mixing my blue yeah after I said let's not use the purple whatever um his beak what color is a flamingo's beak I'm not sure let's do it blue gray because Mariah's whispering orange in the background well it's now blue gray um and once my flamingo is dry, I can go back in and add some details with my pen. Same with those chickens. And just color his beak in. And that's it. That, I'm going to call that done. Um, so quick and easy. Um, it reflects uh, me and my style and it's really fun so I hope that um, I can convince you just to start you don't have to have a plan you don't have to make it perfect you can just be yourself and do it um, happy new year again guys and I'll see you again next time bye